Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. This land... This place is alive. It is alive and it gives life to all living things that connect with it. This is Anishinaabeake. Those who come here must also learn and understand the Anishinaabe way of life. And through that connection, strengthen their appreciation for this place. Learn to respect this place and learn to truly love this place. In the Anishinaabe, when we call it Babik Ponika Sagegen. This is Lake of the Woods. At Unibet, Nigel's taking our casino action to the max. Hello, Nigel. Maximizing blackjack and top table games. Deal me in. Optimizing hundreds of slots with jackpots and coin combos. Cha-ching, baby! Arr, ahoy, matey! Ooh, loves the mania too. My favorite. Nigel is my first mate! I made it say that. Little bit of code. Unibet, home of all the games, home of all the action.
Good morning, curling fans. We're in Kenora, Ontario, Northern Ontario. Men's Playdowns, presented by Unibet. My name is Rory McCusker. I'll be joining you this morning, watching the semifinal action between Trevor Bonneau and Tanner Horgan. Junking it up early. Love to see it. Every rock and play so far. Jake Horgan being asked to rearrange some things in the top 12 foot. Wow. Gets the guard going forward, splits two blues off the side. What a shot. Needed to be played with big weight. And that's what he threw. Sometimes first ends have a habit of being quite boring. Not today. Things still looking okay for Team Bono. Gets an inside roll, actually. Pretty good result there. Thrower Darren Molding. Gets a roll to the open side. So after all that, we have a center guard. Something in the top 12 foot for Team Bono, and soon to be another rock in the side of the eight foot. It's looking pretty favored towards Team Bono right now. Rolls out, unfortunately. That's gonna be a big swing this end because now Team Horgan is going to be able to suck one around the center here, whereas before they would have had to chase on the outside to the wing. That was a good chance for Team Bonneau to really control the house, lie two rocks in the rings with hammer, force the other team to chase, chase their shot rock, and now by rolling out, Team Horgan is going to have a chance to use this overlapped center guard situation, try to hide a rock in the forefoot, maybe even steal. Or at the very worst, try to force Team Bono into the four-foot region. Maybe choke off the scoring area, force Team Bono to a single point. Wild first end in this 10 end game. That's fantastic to see. That rock will stop right along the top of the forefoot. That's exactly where Team Horgan wanted to place that stone. Now the question is, do you play this double run back right now or do you try to chase it with hack weight? Darren Molding almost taking a spill back there. <laughs> Gotta get his feet under him. Game is underway. Third rock thrower, Mike McCarville. Being asked to play a delicate hack weight shot here. Outside sweeper really working on this one. 
Gonna have to get some curl. And that is gonna blow right by. Maybe a little too much weight, maybe a little too much line. Yeah. Or a combination of both, either way. Really flip the end in Team Horgan's favor. Now they can protect this stone in the forefoot a little better. I think they signaled center line guard. I may have missed the call. They may have uh, signaled to come into the rings as well. Either way, you're going to want this stone straddling center line. Make the double run back on the blue a little more difficult. And of course, your primary objective take away this hack weight hit on the intern side that would just. Watch Mike McCarville miss. Last rock thrower. And not, I, I don't know if he's the skip of this team, but Tanner Horgan allows Darren Molding to hold the broom for the front end shots, and Tanner himself sweeps four rocks before coming down and holding the broom for Darren Molding. Looks like just a center line guard. Boys are happy with that. Takes away the intern hack weight. It does not take away the double run back. I imagine the ideal spot would have been just touching center line to take away both. And so it will be this double run back. Rocks are quite close together. This isn't incredibly difficult by run back standards. If he's able to send this red guard anywhere, you know, around the high side of nose, the blue stone, that should cause the blue to smash back and put it in the race and stay there is the most important part. Trevor Bonneau, his first shot in his first end. Too thin. Wow. I did not think that was going to be the case. That was, that was tough to do to get it across the face that thin to miss the red in the rings, but just barely over curls a little bit. Now it is decision time. Do you want to force your opponent to one? If you want to try and steal a point here, you could guard your existing stone in the rings. Team Bino would be running back your stone, so there's no chance of giving up two that way. Team Bino could try some type of um, angle in off off that far corner guard, but I feel like you'd be pretty comfortable leaving them that. They have decided to hit and stick on the Bino stone on the outside of the eight foot. This will ensure they're lying two in the rings, no double available. And it should effectively force Team Bono into a shot for one. Tanner Horgan's last shot without hammer in the first end. Well made, pretty even, no double available. It is gonna be a shot for one for Team Bono. Well, if this at first end is any indication, we are in for a treat this morning. These two teams wasting no time, junking it up, making some big shots. You go back to Jake Horgan's big weight run back earlier in the end. Last rock, first end for his single, Trevor Bonneau. Sweepers on this one the whole way down. They are not able to save it. That rock is going to roll out of the rings. Oh, <laughs> 
They catch a piece of the eight foot. I think it was a single for Team Bono. I'll have to confirm. They kicked it off so quickly. Welcome back to Nora, Ontario, the Unibet, Northern Ontario Tankard. Men's and women's provincials in this pretty nice arena in Kenora, Ontario. Can't say I've been. But five sheets of ice hosting the men's and women's playdowns. That's some terrific shot making on both the men's and ladies side. All games available on Curling Zone, Curling Stadium Live. YouTube page, Facebook, wherever you watch your curling. We're glad to be broadcasting to you this morning. And you know what? The second end, this is about the time I, I ask my audience, where are you tuning in from? Already got some chat, some messages in the YouTube chat. Rick Edwards from Brantford, Ontario, North Bay, Mackenzie Daly tuning in. Mackenzie's been watching the whole tournament. Thanks for chiming in, Mackenzie. Kaylee Reap, morning from Winnipeg. Let's go, Team Horgan. Wendy McKay, hi from Calgary. She's going back and forth between this game and the Laws semifinal being played. Don't blame you. I don't blame you, Wendy. Lots of curling on YouTube and streaming. We can catch up and stay stay tuned with all of our provincial playdowns like never before. It's a pretty incredible time to be a curling fan. Might need to invest in some more screens. I personally can't watch more game than more than one game at a time. I know a lot of curling fans like to get as many going on their screen as they can. I can only pay attention to one at a time. Four perfectly made stones to start this end. Both leads playing 100%. Four foot draw, center line guard, for Team Bonneau, and a corner guard and drawn to the eight foot, for Team Horgan. Wow, look at the curl that hack weight hit. Got with Team Bonneau there. Second Jordan Potts. Really putting the hook on that outturn. Let's find out if it's the spot in the ice or whether Jordan just got that one going because that curled so much, it stuck right on the nose after it got around the, the corner guard. Second rock thrower, Jake Horgan for Team Horgan will try to answer. Jake, I think we got to update your profile picture on Curling Zone. We've got something from juniors here and Jake is a full-grown, six-second hog-to-hog, peel-throwing man at this point. So I think you got to get that updated. Lots of curl on that shot as well. A little more weight. A little more weight than Jordan Potts had, so that will roll into the open. Gives an opportunity for Team Bonneau to drag play back to the center line. If they're able to make a roll to the center line here, 
it's going to be a very good looking end for Team Bonneau. With a center guard, Rock in the top of the 12 foot, and ideally at the end of this shot, Rock in the top four and see if they can make the roll. Will roll to the center line, just not quite far enough. That's one of those shots in curling. I mean, it's either it's either there or it's not. And even though they got close, it is going to be wide open. It is going to leave the outside face available. This will just be Team Horgan and Team Bonneau trying to wrestle play back and forth. Team Horgan trying to bring things over to the wing. Team Bonneau trying to roll things over to the center line. Until one of them can make this hit and roll perfectly. We'll see attempts traded back and forth. Outside sweeper on this one makes me think it's got a curl. And wow, did that ever come in hard. We are getting a ton of movement this morning. Both ways, the intern side and the outturn side on that left side of center line as we see it right now. Jeez, Colin Hodgson got on that rock just above the, the hog line and it did not look like it was going to come back, but... Wow, it curled all the way to the nose. Mike McCarville. Flash to hit in the first end. He'll try to adjust, make a better attempt here. Straight sweep the whole way down. Switching to curl side now. And they'll stick it above the rings. There was nowhere really to roll to on that hit. You were never really going to get your rock in a, a great positioning. Just a nibble of the 12 foot sitting right in the intern draw path is probably a perfect spot for that rock. Team Bono maintained control throughout this end. Very quick end, I might add. Players just getting in the hack and throwing before they can even think about it. It is a 10 end game after all. There's 20 rocks to be thrown per person. feeling in a, in a good way. There's no sense in taking much extra time. Turn draw, looks pretty nice. Perfectly executed draw.
shot making from both teams a perfect outturn draw around to the forefoot followed by a magnificent intern run back from Mike McCarville Team Bonneau has got a good chance here of forcing or stealing. Two rocks remaining if they can successfully chase the next two. Corbin Stones, they're going to have a really good chance at controlling this end. Now this rock is curling hard. They're able to get it by the top one, not by the second though. We'll split the Bonneau Stones off into the 8 foot and 12 foot. Really not ideal. They would have loved to leave that rock in the top 12 to help protect the forefoot. Now Team Horgan's going to have an opportunity to lie too. Dead even. No double available. And Team is going to have to make a choice of which one they're, they want to chase. Tanner Horgan. Oh, they're on this one right away. Just nice, soft weight keeps that rock. Second shot along the 12 foot. There is no double opportunity available. And just like that, with one miss from Trevor Bonneau, it's a count of two for Tanner Horgan at this moment. I think that's the type of game we're going to see today. So far, the shot making has been that good. Big sweep, trying to get this to curl. Uh, they would have loved to get a roll inside there, use the center guard, tried to force Team Horgan to make another soft weight. But it's going to be an open hit and stick for two points. And I think that's just the kind of game we're going to get today, folks. One miss is going to flip the end around. Such good shot makers on the ice, so much on the line. This is the game that these two teams would be preparing for all year long. Last rock, second end, Tanner Horgan trying to answer the single he gave up in the first end with a deuce here in the second. Colin Hodgson, heavy clean, now sweeping it a bit. That rock looks good. Darren Molding gives him the A-OK -okay skipper. Point, that'll be two points for Team Horgan. We'll take a two-to-one lead into the third end here in Kenora when we come back. At Unibet, Nigel's taking our casino action to the max. Hello, Nigel. Maximizing blackjack and top table games. Deal me in. Optimizing hundreds of slots with jackpots and coin combos. Cha-ching, baby! Arr, ahoy, matey! Ooh, love so many too. My favorite. Nigel is my first mate! I made it say that. Little bit of code. Unibet, home of all the games, home of all the action.
Sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Welcome back. Here we are, Kenora, Ontario. A really high energy game. Semi final being played between Trevor Bonneau and Tanner Horgan. We got off to a screaming start. Lots of rocks in play, big run backs, lots of movement in that first end. Team Bonneau ends up taking a steal. Oh, sorry, no, they scored one. Scored one in the first end. Team Bonneau really looked like they had the second end under control right into the end of Third Rocks. A great run back from Jamie, Third Rock thrower Jamie McCormick. But two Bonneau Rocks in the rings with a center guard and a rock in the top 12, but a miss, a bad miss on, on Skip Trevor Bonneau's first rock. Split open, the rock in the top 12, opened things up for Team Horgan. And it was a win for the skipper. Of Team Horgan, he made his shot for two. Now here we are in the third end. Team Pano with Hammer again, down one point. We'll be facing a tight center guard and a semi-frozen stone in the top four foot. Team Pano does have the shot rock on the top of the button. Once again, looks like a tit-for-tat kind of end. So much movement they're getting on that intern side. Just incredible. We saw that in the first end as well. With these teams performing at as high a level as they are, that's going to allow some pretty incredible shot making. I hope everyone's got their coffee brewed, their comfortable seat tilted back. I think we're going to have a really, really fun game this morning. I'm just popping back in, checking the chat. Love to hear from everybody joining me this morning, watching the game. Got Reva Lowe from Mayor Thorpe, Alberta. Haley Rapp, love Trevor and Team 2, but I have to root for my boss. <laughs> I think she means Team Horgan. That's great, though. Hi from Portland, Oregon. Gretchen, thank you. Trying to track several games today and get my homework done. We'll see how well that goes. Oh, I know that feeling, Gretchen. Hello from New Jersey, USA, says Christine Wesley. Well, thanks for tuning in. Big sweep. Just over curls the run back attempt. They will clear one Bono Stowe out of the rings. One Bono Stowe, one Bono Stone. They do leave a corner guard though, somewhat unfortunate. So right now it's gonna be Team Bono with Hammer with Shot Rock in the top of the forefoot, and an opportunity to open up a new scoring area along the wing. There will be an angle for Team Horgan to play a red into blue while rolling towards that corner guard side. So Team Bonneau is going to have to be careful not to leave this rock in a potentially doubleable position. They'll want to leave it either even in the 12 foot with the red rock, or fully deep, maybe a, a T-line depth to make that potential double a little more difficult. Sweepers are calling back four. That's a great spot. As you can see from the overhead angle there, that kind of potential double is going to be too thin to take on.
Jake Horgan. We'll try to follow things over into the new scoring area along the wing. Try to make both shots at once here. It's one. Makes contact with the second. Geez, good, good uh, eyes, Darren Molding. He saw an angle where where I didn't to get that rock on the intern side. Send it sort of across the face of both blues. They almost had it too. So that is going to be one Oregon stone in the rings, one Bono stone. In the back 12, but very buried. Still a very good situation here for Team Bonneau. Worst case scenario, they will have the forefoot open for a draw for one in case everything goes truly wrong. Very long double. I doubt we'll see Team Horgan take it on. Yeah, just a hit and roll is the call. Very long roll, Darren Molding's asked to perform here. He's got to roll almost eight feet to the wing in order to make this perfect. Challenging shot, Darren Molding's first here in the third end. Big sweep, that's curling a lot. Gets the one, makes the roll. Oh, so close. A really fantastic shot from Darren Molding, but unfortunately, it's one of those shots where it, unless you get at least partially buried, it's not it's not going to help because Team Bono has at least three or four inches to work with around that guard to perform the roll themselves. So roll seven feet, really impressive. Darren Molding just needed that extra foot roll. It's going to open things up here. Third rock thrower, Mike McCarville. Big opportunity to make a roll behind the corner guard. Really put the pressure on Team Horgan. Uh, couldn't quite get the inside roll. Opportunity missed. Now Darren's going to have another opportunity to get that extra foot of roll. Christine Wesley from New Jersey. She started watching curling during the last Winter Olympics and became obsessed. <laughs> Thank you, Canada, for giving me something interesting to watch. Oh, well, welcome, Christine. We're happy to have you. I have loved my forays into American curling. I've been to Kalamazoo, Michigan, Spokane, Washington. Talked with some folks in Minnesota. The American curling audience is a really fun one, very involved. Super happy to have more people from the U.S. of A. watching curling with us. Oh, terrible jam. That's a huge mistake from Darren Molding. It's going to allow Team Bono to keep this sort of open look to their two-point setup. Maybe I overreacted. Maybe that wasn't a terrible miss by Darren Molding, but it's certainly not ideal. Yes. Going to roll his own rock way out into the open. Go, go, go. Big sweep, trying to keep this straight. Pretty good. I think there is an angle for a double there, potentially. Didn't quite roll it far enough off. Fourth rock thrower, Tanner Horgan, throws some of the best big weight in the game of curling. Has since juniors. He's always been known for these bombs that he can he can deliver quite accurately as well. So any kind of double angle you're going to leave Tanner Horgan, you're likely going to see an attempt come down the ice. Yeah. 
if you would like to make a comment in our stream chat, all you have to do is subscribe to Curling Zone. We do that just to keep the bots out of the chat and the random advertisements that sometimes clog up online chats, but you should be subscribed anyway. You'll get alerts on all the live curling that comes on. You can always manage your notifications if you think uh, YouTube is making too many noises on your phone. But if you uh, like this video and, and even more importantly, if you subscribe to Curling Zone, that really shows us that this curling audience is, is out there and eager for more curling. We can bring our product to more rinks, more tournaments. So every little bit you do online, every comment, share, like, it, it really helps us out and it helps the game of curling get more exposure as well. Off and on this sweep. Gets one. Taps the other one out of the rings. Magnificent double takeout, Tanner Horgan. That was the double opportunity that they were waiting for all end long. Trevor Bonneau, he's got two rocks left and he's gonna try to use them. Score two points, he's got a corner guard. The tools are there. They just need to make a perfect draw here. The top four foot depth along the wing. Top bowl, choose to play conservatively. They will. Hit the stone in the back of the rings. I suppose that's smart. Now they can keep a blank opportunity available. If they really wanted to, you would have seen Team Bono play either a freeze to that back one or, like I was mentioning, a draw around the corner guard. But 10 end game, one point game. Team Bono has hammer in an odd end early on. It probably does make sense to keep that blank opportunity open. Trying to get some curl out of this stone. Last rock in this third end, Trevor Bonneau. The blank attempt. Gets the rock, rolls out of the rings, will retain Hammer for the fourth end. The score will be two to one, Tanner Horgan over Trevor Bonneau. Fourth end when we come back. This land, this place is alive. It is alive and it gives life to all living things that connect with it. This is Anishinaabeake. This is Tree Three territory. And our visitors to this sacred place have a responsibility outlined in that treaty. Those who come here must also learn and understand the Anishinaabe way of life. And through that connection, strengthen their appreciation for this place. Learn to respect this place and learn to truly love this place. 
In Anishinaabe, when we call it Bapi Kwanika Sagegen. This is Lick of the Woods. Welcome back, Kenora, Ontario, hosting the Unibet Men's and Women's Provincials. Anchored playdowns and the Scotties playdowns here in this beautiful facility in Kenora, Ontario. Man, don't those tourism Kenora commercials make you want to get out and explore our country. <laughs> Makes me miss summer. Minus 24 degrees here in Regina, Saskatchewan, where I call home, where I'm uh, commentating from. Love to see all the the messages in the chat checking in with all of my fellow fans where they're watching from turns out all over the country it's not just ontario that cares about this game We've got fans in alberta manitoba new jersey portland oregon i'm sure we've got some overseas viewers as well if they chime in Colin Hodgson, lead rock thrower for Team Team Horgan. Overlap center guards, but a perfect draw on the top four foot. It's going to be another interesting end, I think. We'll see if we, we get some peels. Both teams doing their best to work with what they have. Fans from North Bay, Eric and Chris. North Bay has become quite a strong curling team. Oh, I shouldn't say become. I, I bet it always has been, but has been shown to the, the rest of the world as a strong curling community. We were there with the Sportsnet Grand Slam of curling in 2018, I believe that was. Lots of good fans in, in that North Bay Battalion OHL rink. Loud fans, fans that know curling. North Bay is a great place to watch and play. Taryn Molding really calling that sweeper on. You got it, buddy. Go, go, go. Getting a bit of curl. What a shot. Excellent angles. Forefoot is totally controlled right now by Team Horgan. And yeah. Team Bono is going to say enough of this. We got to get rid of some guards and get access to this. Right now, Bono stone on the side of the button is flying out of the rings if anything touches the red just above it. For now, they'll bash the two guards back, see if their blue stone can't stick around in the forefoot once the dust clears. Ideally, no more guards down the center line after this shot as well. Second, Jordan Potts. Throwing a bomb here. Got one, got two. Rams it back. That is exactly what was called for. And look at the roll. Now we have a, fo a four-foot line guard partially covering a Team Bono Stone on the side of the forefoot, and I think it's Shot Rock as well. So what an excellent result. Splits the two Horgan Stones out of the forefoot. Removes the two center guards. That's an end-flipping shot. Jordan Potts. Curl out of this. 
They will make contact. They will avoid the jam. And they will stick around in the 12 foot. That's a that's a good result. There was no roll there for Team Horgan that was really going to help them. That was just about eliminating the stone. Stick around in the in the rings was a good bonus. Unfortunate roll out there. When you have hammer and you're trying to score multiple points, it's never a good thing rolling out of the rings. You're always hoping that you can find a way to count all your stones and stick around. And when the rock rolls clean out when there's no good reason for it. That was a wide open hit. Bit of a miss. Bit of an opportunity missed. Not only is Team Horgan about to lie three, they are about to take away the crucial draw path behind the guard that protects the centermost area of the house. Kind of a long way of saying, now Team Horgan gets to draw around this, this four-foot line guard instead of chasing their opponent around the rings. Opportunity to capitalize. That's going to be pretty perfect. May have came a little bit deep, perhaps not quite as buried as they were looking for, but that's a made shot. Now occupy the area that they were trying to. It will open up a tap back opportunity. They've shown just enough of that stone on the center line side that Mike McCarville might be able to sneak a stone in there. Tapping the redstone back. Giving potential backing, making this Bono stone very difficult to remove. That's going to be significantly heavy outside as well. Going to drift back for third shot. And it's going to give Team Horgan another opportunity. Take the opportunity to appreciate Team Horgan's jackets, the beautiful Northern Lights pattern. Kind of cityscape, mountainscape backdrop. Those are cool. Not a ton of ice for Darren, who definitely has a, a very outward release. Gives the rock a lot of rotation. Pushes it towards the broom a little bit. You can see that four finger flip kind of release. So that's gonna keep the rock really true and straight. Might not need as much ice as some other other throwers. Colin Hodgson trying to push this rock over. You can see him really lean into those push strokes with his broom. Sweeping, always changing. As a front end player in curling, you gotta always be paying attention to the new techniques and the, the new efforts that are being put forward really see Colin leaning into the push strokes there, trying to scratch the ice towards that direction, trying to coax some curl out of that stone. But that is right where Darren Molding tapped his broom. I think that's exactly where Team Horgan wanted to place that stone. 
It's going to be impossible to remove. Looks like Team Bono is going to try to throw some weight and get rid of the back one of these two frozen stones. Mike McCarville has been asked to, to make some tough shots this game so far. He has flashed two hits. Like I said, 20 rocks overall to throw per, per player. So two flash hits in the grand scheme of things isn't going to kill them, but he does have to snap back. Looks like he's got a good one here. Makes contact with the top, pushes the back right out of the rings, just barely rolls his own shooter off. That was almost perfect. If, if Mike would have been able to keep his shooter at least partially locked on that red stone in the forefoot, it would have made that... that but no rock, almost impossible to remove. Now, he has rolled off an inch or two. It is going to expose the nose. I think Team Horgan can make a little hit and roll behind the guard. Replace that stone. We'll have to be careful to avoid a jam. I think they do have enough room to play an out turn. The spin of the out turn is a little more natural to roll their shooter to the right. Also trying to avoid a jam in the back of the rings. Fairly delicate shot. There's only about an inch and a half of, of space that is acceptable to hit. So, more precise hit coming from Tanner Horgan. Wow, really just hard out of his hand. Big sweet call. Will Colin Hodgson hold this rock? He will. <laughs> what a sweep. Two in a row, Colin Hodgson. Big scrub to get Darren Molding's rock to curl in place. And then another big, big sweep from Colin Hodgson holding that Tanner Horgan hit straight. I'm watching the replay on YouTube right now. The YouTube feed's about 10 seconds behind my live feed and Colin really held that rock down the center line backed it up as you would as uh, you'd hear some curlers describe when you jump a stone right out of the hand of the thrower there's a, a couple seconds of opportunity if you call the sweeper on right away to back the stone up really give it some extra line that the thrower wouldn't have gave it so a smart smart sweep call by Darren Molding and a really hard scrub by Colin Hodgson saves that rock Line three in the house right now. Team Bono is going to have to do some work if they want to score two. They may have to give up on scoring their rock in the back of the 12 foot and really just try to put Trevor Bono's first rock in a good spot right here, right now. Attempt to score a skipper's deuce. The other thinking is that they could remove two red stones here, attempt to get second and third shot, Force Tanner Horgan to address whatever whatever shot rock is, is available. And then after that, maybe Tanner Horgan will leave a double, or perhaps Tanner will roll out on his hit attempt. Then on Trevor's second rock, he can address the, the redstone in the back of the eight foot. But geez, I don't know, just the, the way that Team Horgan's playing, I would be tempted to try and score two with my, my skip stones here. But we will see a double takeout attempt. The most important part of this double is leaving the shooter in the rings. Trevor will not leave his stone in the rings. We'll roll out. This will give Tanner Horgan a Half open opportunity. To hit and stick at the back of the rings, lie three and effectively force Team Bono to one, one point. Early on, this, this end looked all Tanner Horgan, but through some, some nice shot making down the middle, Team Bono was able to open things up with a really nice run back from second Jordan Potts. Through the back half of this end though, Team Horgan has wrestled control of the house. Some 
consistent shot making, great sweeping by Colin Hodgson. They're going to call on Colin once again to get this rock moving. Nice soft weight from Tanner Horgan is going to allow this rock to be manipulatable by the sweepers. The slower you throw a hit, the more room you have, the more time you have to let sweeping take effect. So it's smart to throw that soft weight when, you don't, when there's no need to throw more, especially with sweepers of the quality, Colin Hodgson and Jake Horgan. They are really going to work that rock for you and, and uh, perhaps correct some mistakes if there are any. So facing three. Team Bono will be forced to a single point. Looks like they're electing to hit. Kind of interesting decision there. Trevor hasn't really had a chance to get his draw weight really solidified. Feels more comfortable hitting and sticking. Hey, my opinion is whatever you're going to make, it does indicate that there is a, a little, uh, there's some question marks as far as draw weight is concerned. The broom goes up. Nice shot, Trev. One for Team Bono. It is a tie game after four ends. Really well played game here in Kenora, Ontario. We'll have the fifth end. Horgan will have hammer when we come back. At Unibet, Nigel's taking our casino action to the max. Hello, Nigel. Maximizing blackjack and top table games. Deal me in. Optimizing hundreds of slots with jackpots and coin combos. Cha-ching, baby! Arr, ahoy, matey! Ooh, love so many too. My favorite. Nigel is my first mate! I made it say that. Little bit of code. Unibet, home of all the games, home of all the action. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your stream curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Welcome back, Nor Ontario. The Unibet, Northern Ontario Tankard. These teams fighting for the right to represent Northern Ontario at the Briar. Northern Ontario, fairly established reputation as a high quality curling factory. Some, some great curlers, men's and women's, coming out of the that part of the province. It's always been, it's always been a little strange just understanding exactly what Northern Ontario is. Ontario just geographically is such a big province. I remember being a kid just thinking, ah, oh, that's not fair. 90% of Ontario is called Northern Ontario. It must be hard to play out of there. I didn't really get that it was population based. But anyways, Team Jacobs, Olympic champions, multi-briar champions. It's, it's become a, a hot spot for curling. And we're certainly seeing it on display here with these two teams. Colin Hodgson deciding, you know what, if I'm going to sweep that hard, I'm going to work you guys too. Really calling on the curl there, and that's an impressive shot. Just catching a piece of the 12 foot way out in the weeds there. Getting themselves just a piece of the rings. 
Line two with Hammer early on, no center guards. Pretty favorable situation for the team with Hammer. Chasing this rock with a run back attempt. One, two, gets it. Did he stick around in the rings? It's on, says Darren. Another challenging shot being asked here of Jake Horgan. There is a way though, if, if Jake is able to tuck this stone behind both blue guard and uh, rock in the rings, that same run back is gonna be extra challenging. A lot of rotation on this stone. It's rotated twice already by the time it reaches halfway. Sweepers want nothing to do with it. Looks like it's cruising. Get some late curl. That's going to be a made shot. Not totally buried the way they wanted. A little deep as well, but that was the call. Draw to the wing. It is going to leave enough of the stone open that Trevor Bernard is going to chase this, this one. Called out by the sweepers. This is curling really hard towards the wing. Sweepers hard on it. They will get a little roll. That's an excellent shot. Shot rock in the back of the eight foot. It's going to force Team Horgan to play this stone. Going to leave Team Horgan likely wide open. I don't think there's a way to roll buried without running out of rings here. So the best Team Horgan can hope for is to leave these rocks dead even. Make sure there's no double. But uh, Team Bono is going to have four opportunities to try and create a double by rolling and repositioning in the rings. It's not ideal for Team Bono that they don't have a center guard or some type of obstacle to hide behind or use. Little roll off to the wing. Is it enough, though? Did they leave a double? I think they did. Yeah, with big weight, there is an opportunity to collide into both rocks. Heel with the outturn. Oh. He must assume third rock thrower Mike McCarville is going to flip this one outside because his broom is inside of the, the place they need to hit this rock. Yep. Whoa. 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 Yep, yep. Watch Gets one. Rolls over to the Horgan Stone. That's an acceptable result. You can see what I mean, though. It's, it, the broom was was in a position thinner than the actual double was, so it was assumed that Mike would kind of push that back out towards the rock. Rolls out.
some opportunities missed here. Team Horgan rolling out, allowing Team Bono to hit and stick. Now this rock biting the 12-foot along the wing comes into play because now Team Horgan can't just hit and stick and, and get a blank. They have to try and create two here. Freeze attempt, just under curls, not quite able to get to the nose of the rock they're trying to freeze to. It will take a, a pocket or some type of perfect freeze in order for Team Horgan to score two. Hit and rolls the opposite way I think they were intending to. This is going to create an opportunity to tap these rocks a little bit and create a pocket. With super lively, super lively rocks like this, in order to really make a freeze in, in a sense that you can rely on it to, to be unremovable, you need two stones to back it. The way that these rocks spin and kind of bounce off of each other one backing stone just isn't enough. You're not going to be able to make a freeze good enough to, to totally eliminate the chance of re removal. However, by using two stones, by tapping them to cover kind of both sides, the intern and outturn side, you can then make a freeze in that pocket, and that's going to guarantee, since you're, the momentum of the stone has to translate twice, that, that can give you some assurance that you're going to be able to make a freeze in a place where your rock is going to stick around. Step one, create the pocket. Step two, use the pocket. So with two stones left, Skip Tanner Horgan's going to try to create this pocket and leave his stone in a position that's going to be very difficult to remove. It's going to take just a very precise chip and about a third of the top stone. Trying to manage the line here. Lots of rotation. Rock should spin Colin Hodgson's way. Here's the little tap, and there's the pocket creation. Yeah, they, you can see from the, the straight on angle, it looks like a good pocket, but you can see from the overhead angle, the two blue stones are a little offset, so there probably is a way to, to remove that red stone. You can see where Trevor's putting his broom. He thinks if he hits it just off nose, it'll collide with the leftmost stone from the overhead and cascade over the top of the rightmost stone. So very difficult situation. I think Tanner Horgan did almost as good as he, he possibly could have there. Still dangerous. Trevor will have to hit this in just the right spot. Close. Gets the one, gets the second, spins up, 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 and out. Makes it happen. Now those types of angles and that kind of spin and action, you're unlikely to get that at your local curling club. That is some championship ice, championship rocks and experience at play. Yeah. 
So it will be a hit and stick for one. That bothersome biter on the side of the 12 foot is going to force Team Horgan to take a crack at a single point here. They would have loved to blank this fifth end, but nice run back earlier from Team Bonneau determined that this end was someone who's going to score. Last rock, fifth end. And a solid shot. That'll be one point, Team Horgan. These two high-performing teams continue to do battle. They'll take a quick fifth end break. Please enjoy this message from the event sponsors. Make curling possible in your area. Three to two, Horgan will lead in the sixth end. This land, this place is alive. It is alive and it gives life to all living things that connect with it. This is Anishinaabeake. Those who come here must also learn and understand the Anishinaabe way of life. And through that connection, strengthen their appreciation for this place. Learn to respect this place and learn to truly love this place. In the Anishinaabe, when we call it Babik Ponika Sagegen. This is Lake of the Woods. At Unibet, Nigel's taking our casino action to the max. Hello, Nigel. Maximizing blackjack and top table games. Deal me in. Optimizing hundreds of slots with jackpots and coin combos. Cha-ching, baby! Arr, ahoy, matey! Ooh, love some mania too. My favorite. Nigel is my first mate! I made it say that. Little bit of code. Unibet, home of all the games, home of all the action. Sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium.
Welcome back, Kenora, Ontario. The Unibet, Northern Ontario Tankard. I don't know about you folks, but I have just finished booking my summer vacation to Kenora, Ontario in the Lake of the Woods. Those ads are incredible. Hats off to Tourism Northern Ontario, wh whoever made those. Beautiful. Colin Hodgson, starting things off. Team Horgan forced to a single point in the fifth end. I usually give my kind of edge or analysis of who I think is kind of performing better than the other at this point, but I think things are pretty even between these teams. It seems like whenever there's a few missed shots or half makes from one team, and the other team seems to get a little bit of an advantage, the the back half of the end goes the opposite way, and, and either Team Bonneau or Team Horgan kind of storms back, regains control, and either creates a force, or, or in the third end we saw a blank, actually. So teammates picking each other up. There's been some weak spots, some weak shots here and there, but uh, the next rock thrower responding for each team, kind of cleaning up the mistakes of their teammate. It's been really, really interesting to see. We've also seen some incredible sweeping. And just, I know there's lots of curlers out there that play bond spiels themselves and, and do tournaments. But for those of you that don't, by the time you've gotten this far into the tournament and you've played five or six games or however many games you've played, your muscles, your body, the arms, your lungs, just your will is there, your heart is there, and you're pushing, but your body just starts giving up sooner and sooner. So these front-end players especially that have been sweeping so many rocks, 10 end games, just they, ha they have my, uh, my respect for sure in finding some extra gas left in the tank to really push hard on a sweep that, that's going to make the difference for a teammate's rock. Really strong teammates and, uh, and teamwork we've seen today. Hey, no surprises. Both teams have been red hot at lead, missing hardly any shots. Look at those. Tight center guard, draw around, a responding freeze, and now an even more challenging corner freeze for the team with hammer. Team Bonneau, lead rock thrower Curtis Bird. Made shot number four in a row. This has been incredible to watch. This feels like one of those ends where they're going to keep trading freezes until one team becomes dissatisfied and blows it all up. Oh, just ticked the top guard, but just look at that. They're only working with two and a half, three feet of room to make that freeze. <clears throat> More center guards is not a bad thing for Team Horgan without hammer. Very interesting. I'm surprised that Team Bonneau is uh, tolerating these center guards and this clogged up center line at this point. I suppose Team Bonneau is shot rock in the top of the forefoot. Opportunity here to lie two. By the top guard, by the top 12, and by their own draw in the, in the top four. Just a little bit heavy, but a really well-managed line call by Trevor Bonneau. Just look at that, how far that rock curled. It's poking out the intern side in the back forefoot. Would have curled two and a half feet in its last eight feet of travel. Getting so much movement out of those stones. Now I see why these players are, are choosing to give so much rotation on their rocks. It's, if you don't, that thing's just going sideways. Yeah. 
Mm. Not an ideal result. They're hoping to catch a little more of their guard, hit it thicker, and bash that guard directly back into the forefoot so the, the raised stone stayed there. Instead, they've split everything off, really spread rocks out, and now given Team Bono an opportunity to hit and stick to lie three spread out and open. In a sense, uh, Team Horgan kind of just did Team Bono's work for them. I think Team Bono was in the interest of, of uh, splitting up that center guard, center line sort of cluster. But now, Team Horgan's done that job for them and given them an opportunity to lie three open. No obvious double. You can make this outside straight double, but your rock will be rolling out. Instead, looks like Team Horgan's going to opt to roll in themselves. Little opportunity to catch up with the chat. Donna Hap, go Team Bono. Cheering you on from Shunia. I don't know where that is. But if you check the chat and Google it for me, I'm sure you'll find out. Great commentary and coverage this week. Thanks for the coverage. Well, we appreciate it, Donna. I want to say there's a big hit and roll shot from, from Darren Molding, but with the situation Team Horgan's facing right now, every shot is going to be pretty massive. Gets a piece covered. There's always going to be a double or a run back opportunity, but just the way that Darren's rock came to rest there is, is going to leave a pretty juicy angle. Mike McCarville has missed a few soft weight hits this afternoon. Let's see if normal weight can result in a little more accuracy. Gets one, rolls the opposite way that they were intending, but that rock's in a useful place, fighting the 12 foot. They were hoping to move both stones. I wonder if we're gonna see a double opportunity or a hit and roll here. I didn't quite catch the call. from straight to curl. Really soft weight. Just wanted to leave his rock in the forefoot. Not trying to do anything too, too extreme. Okay. So, okay, they were considering a run back. Yeah, Team Bino playing that run back on the outside would have, would have indicated a, a clear change in strategy, trying to really stack the rings <clears throat> create a multi-score opportunity at the risk of allowing Team Horgan to have the initiative in the forefoot. Instead, they're going to revert back to this little more neutral call, not as um, aggressive as if you were to think of it in that spectrum. They are going to chase Shot Rock inside the forefoot. Successful hit and stick. Team Bino lying first, third, and fourth in the rings right now. The troublesome Horgan Stone is behind cover. It would take a, about a four foot run back to clear that stone out. Team Horgan will attempt to lie two here.
Jake's into that one. Big broom raise. Bit of a sigh of relief, getting a uh, potential multi-score end, sort of tempering that damage. Looks like Team Bino also recognizes, hey, I just don't see us counting that stone in the top 12 foot. So they're going to try to score their two down the middle. Become the first team to occupy the side of the forefoot. Pretty low guard. So run back will be available for Team Horgan, but Team Benoa thinks this is their best chance of hiding the skippers first to eventually score two on the skipper's second. First rock, sixth end. Skip Trevor Benoa. Gets it fully buried. Just above the T-line. Tanner Horgan will attempt to run back. Nice shot from Skip Trevor. Bit, bit disappointing knowing that he had quite a few orbiting potential counting stones in the rings, but just ran out of rocks, weren't able to make them make them count. Be a really good boost for Team Bono to take a two points here in the sixth end. But not if Tanner Horgan has anything to say about it. Run back attempt on Tanner Horgan's last rock, sixth end. It's one. And we'll blow it by. <clears throat> I think that's the first missed hit we've seen from Tanner this morning. Wasn't able to quite get the curl. He played a little softer weight, hoping to more easily stick the Randstone in the forefoot. Put some extra pressure on Team Bonneau. Instead, they blow it by. And Trevor Bonneau will have a mostly open draw for two points. Sweeper's given some heavy scrubs right away. Sweepers have not been off this. Starting to lighten up a bit now. And they're confident this is going to reach the forefoot. Great sweep. Sweepers knew it right away. Acted. Two points on the board. Board for Trevor Bonneau. He will lead four to three in the seventh end. At Unibet, Nigel's taking our casino action to the max. Hello, Nigel. Maximizing blackjack and top table games. Deal me in. Optimizing hundreds of slots with jackpots and coin combos. Cha-ching, baby! Arr, ahoy, matey! Ooh, love so many too. My favorite. Nigel is my first mate! I made it say that. Little bit of code. Unibet, home of all the games, home of all the action. Sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, pawn spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. 
make your curling club the next curling stadium. Seventh end here in Kenora, Ontario, the Unibet men's and women's provincials. Men's tankard, we would say, playing for the opportunity to represent Northern Ontario at the Briar. Really excited for this year's Briar, downtown London, Ontario. Sounds like a pretty good time. Last Ontario Briar, I think, was in Kingston. I'm not very good with my history like this, but I do know the Kingston Briar had some great crowds, packed house, very loud. So excited for another Ontario Briar. Another great draw, Colin Hodgson. <clears throat> Get some late finish. Really working the, the side of the 12 foot, those corner guards very far over. Not impeding a draw, a potential draw to the side of the four foot, even in any way. Seems to be the strategy for Team Horgan is to place those corner guards far, far off. Maybe that's a tactic. So close. Almost gets them all moving. Lead Curtis Bird putting his two stones in a good position down the center line. Second Jordan Potts. Makes another draw to the top of the button. And that was a good enough scenario that Darren Molding decided we got to run this back. Second rock, throw, rock thrower, Jake Horgan. Almost makes all three moves. Still gets the two most important stones out of the way. Yet another impressive display from the front end of both teams. Gets a corner guard. Again, the most dangerous stone being removed. I'm not sure either team has much of an advantage at this moment, I guess. Team Horgan has the opportunity to hit and roll, lie one under cover and one out on the wing. But that four foot line guard is going to prove pretty useful for Team Bono if they're looking to force Team Horgan in this seventh end. Team Bono with the hammer right now. Four ends remaining. Team Horgan likely aren't feeling too, too much pressure to be more aggressive than normal with hammer. But the thought is there. We do need to start scoring multiple points with hammer. Really nice roll, but this is behind the T-line. Interesting ice. Outturn on the in the inside section of the rock. Big hit and roll being asked for. 
Mike McCarville. He's been hitting a lot today. Hasn't quite gotten the exact results. Let's see if he can get one here. Gets a hit. Rolls towards the forefoot. That's a fine result. Sort of an open cat and mouse here. Team Bonneau trying to roll towards the center line. Team Horgan trying to keep their rocks spread out, prevent easy doubles or hit and rolls. Until one team makes a roll perfectly, they'll keep trading opportunities here. Third, Darren Molding. He's had a bit more opportunity to draw than Mike McCarville has, just the way the game has been going. Roll attempt number two. Oof, almost gets a double. This time misses a bit thin. Mike McCarville is not throwing those too bad, just not, just not quite getting the right inch of the rock to roll or get the doubles that he's looking for. Now with this close game though, he'll have three more ends worth of opportunities to figure it out. Some tough shots being asked of Mike McCarville. And like I had said earlier, Darren Molding throwing a bit more draws than his, his counterpart. Just interesting to see how the positional battles take shape throughout a game, especially such a high stakes game like this one. A provincial tankard semi-final. Just another major step on a team's path to the Briar and, and World Championships. I think that's one of the reasons we love curling so much is this tiered, this layered playoffs. You win your region, you win your club, you go to win your province, you win your country, you try to win the worlds. It's just these exciting champions journey. Valuable step right here, a provincial semifinal. Looks like we got a, a bit of a spike in our audience. Hello, everyone. Welcome. We got 1,400 watching on YouTube alone. So great to have a, a curling community this large, all tuning in on a Sunday morning. I know there's there's football on today and stuff like that, but we know where our allegiance lies. We know where the good game is, right here on YouTube. Bernos first. He'll take off the guard. Well established. Uh, kind of set up there. I'm interested to see. Team Horgan's going to split the rings. Knows that a double will be available. I was wondering if we would see them guard uh, again. But nope, they must think that. Trevor's got a, a good opportunity to run their potential guard back and clear the red stones out of the rings anyways. They will leave him that opportunity. And instead take position along the wing. Knowing that Trevor's very likely to, to make that double, they'll try to go for two.
keeping things simple. Lots of good places this stone can be. And right there is one of them. Fine shot. Lots of distance from the other two stones. It'll make a thinking two shots ahead here. They're assuming that Trevor's going to make this double. That will give Team Horgan an opportunity to either hit and stick, leave the two rocks flat, or roll to a place where there's going to be no um, reciprocating double on Trevor's... Uh... Oh, sorry, my, my mistake, folks. Two rocks left in the end. Assuming Trevor will make this double, they will have a hit for two. Gets one, gets two. Strong weight. Trevor almost rolls and catches a piece of the Oregon stone on the side of the rings. That was nearly incredible, but still very good result. Trevor makes the initial double and gives himself an opportunity to maybe kick that third one out of the rings. That would have been a highlight reel shot had it been made. Open draw for two points, Team Horgan. Lead through skip. Really doing good work this seventh end. Started with a great guard. Perfect freeze shot. Colin Hodgson doing his thing, setting up the side of the house. Keeping Team Bonneau's attention on their counting stones in the rings. Just a hard-earned open deuce. Teams trade deuces in the sixth and seventh end. Will be Horgan leading Bono five to four. Trevor Bono has hammer in the very important eighth end when we come back. This land, this place is alive. It is alive and it gives life to all living things that connect with it. This is Anishinaabeake. Those who come here must also learn and understand the Anishinaabe way of life. And through that connection, strengthen their appreciation for this place. Learn to respect this place and learn to truly love this place. In Anishinaabe, when we call it Babikwanika Sagegen. This is Lake of the Woods. At Unibet, Nigel's taking our casino action to the max. Hello, Nigel. Maximizing blackjack and top table games. Deal me in. Optimizing hundreds of slots with jackpots and coin combos. Cha-ching, baby! Arr, ahoy, matey! Ooh, love so many too. My favorite. Nigel is my first mate! I made it say that. Little bit of code. Unibet, home of all the games, home of all the action. We're back in Kenora, Ontario. It's the eighth end. What an incredible game we've had this morning for those of you who've been watching the whole time. Really strong start, first end filled with rocks. I think the first six or seven rocks all in play, all frozen along the center line. Right from the get-go, we knew this was going to be a good game. But no force to one in the first end, a deuce for Tanner Horgan in the second. Able to blank the third and then take a single point in the fourth, tie things up. Tanner Horgan took a single to go into the break. Team Bonneau finally got their two points with Hammer in the sixth end, and then in the seventh end, Team Tanner Horgan really putting on a clinical end, not missing a shot. Giving themselves a guaranteed shot at two points. Now we enter the eighth end. A very analytically important end. 
maybe analytics isn't the right word, just your your chance of winning the game increases exponentially if you score in the uh, eighth end. Really a significant impact on your likelihood of winning. Scoring in the eighth, both teams will try hard to do. Had a center guard, a nice draw around. And now we'll see a freeze attempt. I didn't quite catch the call. I thought that was a freeze on top. Perhaps they were trying to come into the button area, but that either way, that will slide deep. Colin Hodgson just giving that one a little bit too much gas. Curtis Bird, lead rock thrower for Team Vino yep. from Thunder Bay, Ontario. Yep. Yes, yes. Hard line. Hard line. Go, 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 go. Hard. Hard. Hard line, Mike. Oh. Huge sweep. Big sweep to get that rock by. Didn't want to tick out into the open. Still will be deep, still will be usable for, for Team Horgan, but that's definitely a better result. Sweeper's getting that by the top top eight rock. Second rock thrower, Jake Horgan. Had a very nice game, playing a lot of soft weight hits. A couple run backs as well. Made perfectly in the first end. It's going to take two shots to get those red rocks out of the forefoot, so... Great shot to determine that play will be coming to the forefoot button area. That's exactly what Team Horgan wants. Shrink that scoring area. Right now it is a Team Horgan guard down the center line. So if something's getting run back, it's going to be a Team Horgan stone first. So even though it is an opportunity to get shot rock here for Team Bono, this definitely plays into the strategy, the end tactics for Team Horgan. Trying to get some extra curl out of that one. It will roll open. Lots of communication. You can hear the voices sort of raise a little bit. Everyone's a little more antsy. Just the importance of this eight at eighth end. Both teams understand they're in the critical part of the game, the last three ends. Stakes are raised. Communication pays off. A perfectly managed stone occupies the very top of the button. That's going to be enough. Trevor Bono. they tried to gain advantage in the forefoot. They tried to play this sort of center line game. It has not worked. They will need to bash these, these guards back and at the very least get rid of the two protecting stones. We'll only get one rock. Not a bad result, it just means opportunity missed. They'll likely get another shot at it. Thank you. 
They're not happy with that result. Would have loved that to stop a little higher up, curl a little less, but that's going to be quite close to the rings. It's going to make a run back opportunity that much easier. One, two, three, four. All four rocks that were intended to move did indeed move. That's a great shot, Mike Mac. Mike McCarville. Hits that rock exactly where they needed to. Both guards gone. Two Horgan stones in the forefoot. One of them has left the forefoot. One of them has uh, kind of rolled to the back of the button going to be a very manageable situation for Team Bono. Things just got quite dangerous for Team Horgan. They are one miss away from uh, giving Team Bono a chance at lying four rocks in the rings with hammer. Scary stuff. Every shot becomes critical. One and two. Calmly makes the easier double. Quite natural angles for that double. Leaves the Horgan stone in a place where it's actually gonna be quite difficult to double off the the reds. I think Team is gonna have to, yeah, play a freeze attempt. Under curls. Contacts the opposite stone that they were hoping. Boy, does that ever change things. Now, instead of Bono stones being difficult to remove, it's Team Horgan stone that's going to be quite difficult to remove.
they did decide to blow it up. Those two blues were going no matter what. I think that timeout was just Team Horgan deciding whether it might be worth it to try and guard that scenario. Is it, is it good to keep that, that frozen situation alive? Should they try to throw a little tap, maybe improve it? But the decision ended up being make the hit. Clear everything out. This will give Team Bino a blank opportunity. And I think that's what the discussion was. So, trying to make two rocks go away here. Oh, and they will only get one. Oh, that's a pretty significant change. If both of those red rocks go flying, it's it's an almost guaranteed blank attempt for Team Bono. Now, as long as Team Horgan stays in the rings with this hit, there will at least be a double needed to blank, or, or it might even force Team Bono to just try a shot for one. Ideally, Team Horgan will roll over to the open side, leave no double, force Team Bono to take a, a shot at a single point. Trevor Bruneau, last rock, eighth end for a single. Big sweep for Curl. We'll get that rock to the nose. It'll be a single point. Team Bruneau, tie game, two ends left. Team Horgan has hammer and the advantage going into nine. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your stream curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next curling stadium. At Unibet, Nigel's taking our casino action to the max. Hello, Nigel. Maximizing blackjack and top table games. Deal me in. Optimizing hundreds of slots with jackpots and coin combos. Cha-ching, baby! Arr, ahoy, matey! Ooh, love some mania too. My favorite. Nigel is my first mate! I made it say that. Little bit of code. Unibet, home of all the games, home of all the action. Welcome back to Kenora for the exciting finish. The Northern Ontario Tankard, presented by Unibet. The final two ends of this incredibly well-played game. Very intense and even emotional curling you can see every end the stakes get higher and higher the body language of the players it's more and more intense both teams rising to the challenge both teams getting better and better throughout the game this has been a proper battle sales deep colin hodgson he was deep on a, a draw in the 
I think it was the seventh end as well. Down the middle. Or no, the eighth end it was. Opportunity for the team without hammer to make use of their center guard. Center guard's high enough as well that it's going to be a little more difficult to run back. It's about a halfway guard. Making it more challenging to run back if the situation ever gets very favorable for Team Bell. This has got a long way to curl though. Sweeper say weight's good. and second stone. Really nice management of that stone, getting it to curl. That inside angle was so important. Not only have they pushed the Bonneau stone back to the, the back of the forefoot, but now they've rolled to a place where they can actually use the other turn, the in turn, to tap it back if they need to later this end. Team just lost it, lost the line. They were trying to communicate about weight and line, but there was a jump in the stone and they had the wrong side of the sweep engaged. Easy to do. Single peel, no need for a run back. Team Horgan had been waiting for that moment. Five rocks had come down. So they were finally able to peel cards. Not especially favorable angles for Team Bonneau, but they will throw a center guard anyway. With only two ends remaining, tie game without hammer. It is Team Bonneau's responsibility to push play. Otherwise, Team Horgan We'll go old school, just peel everything in sight, try to keep that hammer, that last rock advantage to the very last shot of the game. This rock is coming deep, so they're trying to manage the line. Pretty good opportunity to move two blue stones out of play in one shot. Jake Horgan. Want this to curl. Gets one. Blows it by. Opportunity missed. That heavy guard that Team Bono just threw. They'll have an opportunity to replace it if they wish. Will be another guard. Mike McCarville has been asked to hit nearly all game. Good opportunity to practice. Just draw weight.
Also going to slip a little deep. Bit of a better angle. only two games on the ice we can hear the play hear the players quite well very interesting to hear them kind of discuss there Colin Hodgson suggesting we might need to change gears here recognizing that the situation is getting a little late in the end to be cleaning things up Little chip and roll. Gets the best of both worlds. Gets rid of the top blue. And keeps the shooter in play. A potential counting stone for a multi-score end. Three rocks remaining per team. Question for Pete, Team Bono is, do we try to eliminate reds? Or do we try to steal a point here? Well, the easy double down the middle is going to be too tempting to ignore. A really good result if they make it rolls, if he, if Mike rolls his shooter just on top of their existing stones. Double and roll. Big shot here in the, in the ninth end. Makes the double, makes the roll. Terrific shot in a big moment. Mike McCarville. Clean double is made, the obvious double. Looks like Team Bonneau will have an opportunity to answer with a double of their own. But if they do make that long double, they will leave a double for their opponent. And then a blank is quite likely. Al Hackner in the house. I think my uh, my camera operator James Gordon was trying to give a look at the times, the times that teams have left, but all I could see was Hackner. <laughs> Looks like seven minutes remaining for Team Bono, six minutes and thirty six seconds for Team Horgan. A good amount of time, a normal amount of thinking time remains for each team. Neither team is in clock trouble. Trevor Bono's first shot. In this ninth end, trying to hit and roll, group his stone with the opponent's stone. A huge sweep. They barely avoid a jam, and they do stick around for second shot. 
not what was called. That was a definite plan B when, when it was halfway down the ice. That stone was significantly overcurling. And at the last minute, they decide to roll the opposite direction. That was called. Tanner Horgan, his first stone in this ninth end. Trying to keep either a blank or a score of two alive for his team. Would really like to not get forced to a single point. It's going to start with a hit and roll. Rolls pretty directly on top of the, the opponent's stone. That's pretty much exactly what was called. It's going to be tough for Team Bono not to leave a double. We'll try to roll about two feet to the left. Create an angle so a double attempt would then roll out the shooter stone. So they'll still try to force Team Horgan to a single point with a really specific roll here. Curl sweep on. Will it hold on in the eight foot? It will not. So trying to be perfect, trying to be a little aggressive with that roll, which they had to be. Ends up overthrowing it just a little bit. It will be an open hit for two points. Team Horgan. Right on the nose. It will be two points for Team Horgan. That's a 7-5 lead headed into the 10th and potentially final end in the semifinal. Northern Ontario Tankard Playdown presented by Unibat. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. At Unibet, Nigel's taking our casino action to the max. Hello, Nigel. Maximizing blackjack and top table games. Deal me in. Optimizing hundreds of slots with jackpots and coin combos. 
Cha-ching, baby! Dar, ahoy, matey! Ooh, loves the mania too. My favourite. Nigel is my first mate! I made it say that. Little bit of code. Unibet, home of all the games, home of all the action. Sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Here we go. Tenth and final end. Unibet, Northern Ontario, Tankard. Men's playdowns. Playing, playing for the opportunity to represent Northern Ontario at the 2023 Briar in London, Ontario. That's going to be a rocking one. This, of course, the semifinal matchup. Starting with a pretty standard draw to the top four. Ends up coming a bit light. Top eight. Maybe that's where they called it. And now a completed corner guard. Both leads doing their job off the bat here. Trying to call a freeze tap, I think. Taps it right on the nose. Perfectly executed sweep and throw. Nice call, Darren Molding in the house. Holding that rock right where he wanted to. Two corner guards, one on either side, will be the tactic of choice for Team Bono. Perfectly even, no double peel available. Four perfectly executed lead rocks. It's been the case for the majority of this game. Recognizing our audience on YouTube is now 1,600 people. Stream is also going to Facebook, other YouTube page, pages, but thank you everyone tuning in however you choose to join Curling Stadium Live. Camera operator and scene switcher James Gordon on site is Jerry Gertz producing. On the side cams this afternoon, or I guess this morning, is Matt Strohoff. Operating side cameras for us. Thank you, Matt. Actually played in the, the event with Team Sashewski. Sashewski. That's a tough one. But thanks for hopping on side cams today, Matt. Bringing everyone at home this super high quality, high definition live stream. By the fans, for the fans. Curling Stadium Live, not affiliated with any particular provincial or national organization we just bring you high-end curling wherever we can Kenora has been such a good host to us in this tournament really impressive arena ice surface as high-end of a, a tournament as any provincial play down across the country some more made shots Tap and roll around the guard. We'll rearrange things. Jake Horgan will try to reestablish control of the center line. Or no, they will chase this shot stone, or the second shot stone of Team Bono. Team Horgan with a two-point lead, of course. They'd love to force their opponent to one or less and win the game right here in the 10th end, but they're not going to take any unnecessary risks. They know even if Team Bono gets two points, it will be an extra end with Team Horgan having hammer, so... All of that math, all of those possibilities, factoring into their decision-making, their tactical shot choice. Tight 
Time for a team discussion. Timeout is called. Coach Al Hackner. With one of the nicest Asham leather jackets I've ever seen. A styling man. Looks like a hack weight tap, tap and roll is the call. A pretty safe shot. If second rock thrower Jordan Potts is to tick the guard, that is A-OK. -okay. Big sweep now as this rock finds its curl. It will tick the top. Will they stick around in the rings? It will cascade out the back. Not ideal result. They don't fully take off the center guard. They do bump it out of the way a little bit. And they don't make contact with the rock in the top four. Those were the two acceptable results. Getting rid of one or the other. Not just kissing that top guard and rolling out of the rings. Slightly better than before Jordan shot, but not significantly. You can feel the tension in this game just has boiled down to this 10th end. Really well played game. Big responses from each team. Every time there was a challenge or an advantage one way, the opposite team has responded. Really nice management to that stone. Puts it in the perfect spot. Attacking this stone, really important they leave their shooter in the rings. They miss outside. Ticking off the outside guard, rolling across. They do get a little bit of a bonus tap on the Horgan Rock in the forefoot, but really that is not what was called and they did not lose 
leave their shooter around. Team Bono needs three rock, three points to win, two points to tie, and right now they have zero rocks in the house. It's not looking good right now. They will have an opportunity. On third, Mike McCarville's last stone. Colin Hodgson has been on this one from the get-go. That excellent sweeping display from Colin Hodgson means they only tick a little bit of that top guard. They keep the angle straight. And because of that good bit of sweeping, they take away the outturn side. Great sweep call and great sweep by Colin. Going to force Team Bono to this intern side once again. A wall of red guards the button and forefoot area. It's going to take some precise shot making from Team Bono and a miss or two from Team Horgan to give them a shot to give Team Bono a shot at three, maybe even at two as well. They make a tap, doesn't quite get the curl they were looking for, and that is going to be a fairly open Beno stone available for hitting. I think uh, Team Horgan just took a timeout just to conserve conserve time. I'm not sure that they had taken one yet, so they might have two in the bank. May as well use them if you have them. Tanner Horgan's first stone in the 10th end. Looking to remove a Bono stone and ideally roll a little inside. Near perfection. Removes the Bono stone, rolls just far enough to get buried, but not too far. An intern freeze attempt would have been the fear of rolling too far, but no. Tanner Horgan takes both options away. And now Team Bono is looking at some, some difficult shots already.
Well, they do get a rock in the rings. Unfortunately, it just barely overcurls. Unfortunately, it's going to be fourth shot. And you can hear Darren Molding say it. Bit of a, a disappointing end to such an incredibly well-fought game. Team Horgan just made the right rolls, the right taps, the right draws. A, a nearly flawless 10th end from Team Horgan. I see like an in-off, some kind of in-off off the the stone that Trevor's standing next to. You might catch the top red and then cascade into the back two reds and then somehow magically the middle red explodes off. I'm not sure how it would work. They will choose to concede. They don't see a shot. It was a very well-played game. Both teams should be very proud of that, that performance. I know it was a thrill to watch. These sweepers, these line callers, these rock throwers doing what they do best. Some of the best teams in the world. Team Tanner Horgan will move on. Play the Unibet Northern Ontario Tankard final against Sandy McEwen. That will be at 2 p.m. Central Time. We'll have it here on Curling Zone YouTube page, Curling Stadium Live. Thanks you for tuning in. We'll see you at 2 p.m. Thanks a lot. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. At Unibet, Nigel's taking our casino action to the max. Hello, Nigel. Maximizing blackjack and top table games. Deal me in. Optimizing hundreds of slots with jackpots and coin combos. Cha-ching, baby! Arr, ahoy, matey! Ooh, love so many or two. My favorite. Nigel is my first mate! I made it say that. Little bit of code. Unibet, home of all the games, home of all the action.